and Phil on BBC Radio 1. So we are joined by Watsky. Hello, hello. Hi, thank you for having me. It is an honour to have you in our presence. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. So for the people listening that might not have heard of you, can you introduce yourself? I am a rapper and a poet. I'm from San Francisco, California, and I live in Los Angeles now. And I tour with my live band. I do a combination of rap and poetry, and uh, we just finished a festival run in the UK. We were touring off of an album called Cardboard Castles that I released about two or three months ago and made many wonderful stops in the United Kingdom. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the long and the short of it. It sounds like it's been a good little period recently. Yeah, yeah it's been a really exciting year because when I first started, so I consider myself an ambassador mm-hmm. for several communities, um, the spoken word poetry community, the hip hop community, the digital media creation community. And, you know, uh, I'm passionate about all of these things. But my first step into professional artistry was as a spoken word poet and I was uh, on this old TV show called Deaf Poetry Jam in 2007 it was on HBO and I toured universities and college campuses for like six or seven years and I would play to crowds of 12 to 20 to you know 50 you know just not very many people over and over again hundreds of gigs and it's only in the last year that we've been able to play real concerts and have people come and know the songs and you know we, we really appreciate it because it's to see the growth that's happened in one year has been amazing. That's a pretty good evolution as an artist to say that that was your origin story Yeah, here you are now. Hmm. I feel very, very grateful because there's so many talented poets out there, you know, to be able to have a taste of that world and then get to have a taste of the concert performance world too has been really, really gratifying. Yeah, so you've just just been on a huge tour. Yeah, (laughs) and you got back today. It's it's over today, isn't it? This is it. This is my last commitment. When we step out of this interview, I will be on vacation for the first time in four months. Are you still feeling alive? Yeah, are you alive? Seriously? I am alive. I I feel that kind of of, um, fatigue of my body, but Mm -hmm. mental (laughs) sharpness. I don't know if you can tell. I'm very with it right now. (laughs) That's great. So what are you going to do to relax now that you're you're free? I'm going on a road trip. Oh, great. I'm meeting somebody I should, uh, should say I'm meeting a young lady that I met on my last tour. I'm hey. meeting her in Paris, and we're driving to Vienna together, and we don't know where we're going. That was a classy wow. road trip. I thought Isn't that romantic? West Coast, yeah, East Coast. So no, starting in Paris I with know. a lady friend. Wow. I've really, I've really set myself up for disaster if it's, if it's not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Or if we could uh, end up not liking each other, too. Who knows? Yeah, much like the tour. Yeah. <laughs> I don't still know. see. Fingers crossed. Fun. So what's the best country you visited on the tour? Obviously, the United Kingdom. <laughs> That's a complete. Yeah. That's the Pandora's <laughs> answer. So you're in the UK. What is the worst thing about the UK? Be honest. Uh, the weather, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> you came at like the one week where it's good, though. Yeah. I know. Like roulette. I'm from San Francisco, actually, and so I feel deep kinship with Brits. <laughs> Driving on the left side of the road is Free terrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Confusing. Oh, yeah. do you guys have a, an actual tour bus, then? We have a splitter van. We're in that in-between stage as a band where we still drive ourselves, uh-huh. and, uh, you know, we, we've gotten a lot better, but our first few days on the road were Mm -hmm. were trials by fire. Do you have some road stories? Do us antics? um, Denver, the door broke during a blizzard (laughs) and so it was open and piles of snow were just blowing in through the door as we were like late night trying to get to our venue but you know, fun. Make us stronger. That sounds fun. Next tour, you'll have a jacuzzi on top of the tour bus, I'm sure. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really a, a fan of jacuzzis, maybe one in the back, one on top. I like my driver to be sitting in a jacuzzi while, yeah. while yeah. he's driving us, yeah. So, we came from YouTube. You have a famous YouTube as well, mm-hmm. which is great. I was just wondering, what is your favorite video on YouTube or viral video? Big question. Favorite, like, of all of across all? all? Oh, yeah. man, that's so one. difficult. Uh, I'm a fan of videos that go viral that also can cross over into other things. I mean, Thrift Shop, I think, yeah. is an amazing example of a great video this year that mm-hmm. has appeal to multiple people, uh, you know, on YouTube and on format radio and stuff. So I'm really inspired by that success. Yeah, it's quite That's similar great. to you. I was going to ask, is, do you think that there's one video on the internet that anyone listening might be like, oh, I've seen that video. Oh, it's that guy. Yeah, I mean, there's... I had the fast rap video two years ago that really, I know they play it over and over on RudeTube. Yeah. Um, that was <laughs> oh, rude tube. like the one that, uh, that kind of launched me. Um, but yeah, I've actually taken it off the internet. This is very... I, I saw that because I saw that video like just after it was posted. Yeah. It had like 50,000 and then I went back the next day and it had like 1 million and the next yeah. day it had like 3 million and I was like, whoa. It really like... exploded. I, I mean, I made a conscious effort at that point and I, was, I don't get me wrong, I'm proud of what that video mm-hmm, did for mm-hmm. me. Yes. I'm proud to be a member of the online creator community, but I think that there's a danger of pigeonholing yourself. <laughs> And Very especially true. if you want to expand into other avenues. And, you know, I could have easily done 
kid raps faster, a kid raps even faster yeah, again with yeah, crazier yeah, yeah. animals, you know, spinning plates on his hands. You know, that's not the career I'm interested in building. You know, I, I, I believe that the power of art is being able to communicate with somebody and change their mind and make mm -hmm. them feel something. And you don't do that through like gimmicky technical <laughs> displays of talent. Yeah. And, and that's great to have, but I, I wanted more for you know, my career. And yeah, so in the yes. intervening two years, the goal has been to work hard at just putting out good content. Okay, now we've got some of your fans trapped within this computer in front of you. And they've, uh -oh, got, that's terrifying. they've got some questions let's, for you. Let's let them out. Question from Marie. Would you rather live without the internet or junk food for the rest of your life? Oh, <laughs> is that a hard question? <laughs> it's tough. hard because I subsist entirely on junk food. <laughs> Oof, okay. Um, so I, you know, I'm gonna have to say without junk food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'd like. I'd like to think that I could eat healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That just I makes me a better person. One, You'd be forced to do it then. I it's tried tough. to propose a very unpopular thing on my tour group when we were in Germany. Uh, the very first thing we did when we sat down together in the UK. Um, was everyone got onto their phones and they started checking their email and we were at dinner in <laughs> yeah. Europe together and I was like, we're in Europe on tour, everyone's on their phones, no one's <laughs> talking to each other. Um, what do you guys think if every night when we sit down for dinner, um, we put our phones in a stack and, you know, or we have 10 minutes of internet and then yep. we talk to each other. Okay. And I, like I was, I was yeah. almost run out of town on a pitchfork. It was not, really? not a popular. <laughs> that did not go down? No, my, my days as a tyrannical tour leader it came very quickly to an end. I just like, was like, oh, right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I still like you guys. It's so good. Question from Claudia. Hi, my name is Claudia and I have two questions. First of all, what kind of music did you listen to growing up, such as artists or genres? And do they still inspire you today in your music? Like any kid my age who grew up listening to hip hop, or most of us, Eminem was a big influence. Mm -hmm. Just the rhyme schemes, the way that he layered things. Uh, rhyme scheme wise, Eminem has been a big influence. Um, the group Outkast, Charlie Tuna from the group Jurassic Five, who <laughs> people over here may know of, but he uh, yeah. knows a little more underground. And he is just, he's got an amazing baritone voice and great syllable pattern distribution. Let's choose one more. Pola. Pola. Hi, my name is Pola. I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm a really big fan of George Watsi. And my question is, what do you feel like is your biggest flaw? Hmm. Wow, wow, that's a nice question there. <laughs> Just straight to it. What is the number one worst thing about you? Oh my god, well, that I can't commit to relationships because I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I don't oh, know, that's, that's how, how serious do we want to get? Relatable. Yeah. Up um, there. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I think that that is like, let's be real. That's my biggest fraud. She flaw. wants the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, she wants the answer. I, I, I seriously work all the time like mm. I, and I love working. I'm passionate about this. Uh, I don't know what it is that drives me, but I feel compelled to do something new every day. And when I'm not doing something, I feel like less of a person. And I do honestly, I think that that's cut into my ability to have meaningful relationships, <laughs> yeah. which is uh, which is why I'm going on this road trip. I'm trying to force myself oh, yeah. to do it. <laughs> well, to, uh, well, Paris is the best place to start a relationship. Good place to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's really setting us up for such disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what is the future of Watsky? So we've heard where you came from, your journey to now, everything that's been going on the last few months. Where do you want to go next? I'm hopefully going to do some soul searching on this road trip that I'm mm. going on. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like, we accomplished so many things in these past few months that were really our end goals. Mm -hmm. And so now you don't get complacent. You figure out what are your next goals. And I mean, I want to keep... Like the same way that when we had that video go viral, we didn't want to sacrifice cheap hits yeah. for a long career. I don't want to sacrifice the strength of what we've established for like getting a radio hit on the air. Okay. You know, like I don't think that the right route for me to take is to try and become a top 40 artist. If that happens incidentally, that would be amazing. But what I'm trying to do is stay true to the chord that we've struck in people, which is, you know, if you work hard and you present yourself in an honest way that you can be successful. And I think that that's what resonates with what we do. You know, it's the message across everything. It's it's that what you have is good enough. The story that you have to tell is good enough. And a lot of people ask me when they look at me and I write on my immigration card that my occupation is a rapper. Like yeah, that's yeah, the guy yeah, in yeah, customs. Yeah. He's like, well, you're a rapper? What, the, what are you talking about? You're not uh, a rapper. You don't yeah. look like a rapper. It's, uh, it's, it's the idea that no one has to look like anything to accomplish what they want. You don't have to fall into a certain category. You can, you, you know, you can present your own story in any way. And every human has a compelling story to tell. And so, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to produce art that I believe in. And I hope that thousands and thousands of people you know, latch on to it, but if they don't, I feel very proud of what we've done so far. So thanks for joining us, Watsky. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs>